Call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the School District of Springfield Township. Today's Monday, May 15th, 2023, and this is our regular board meeting. It is incredible to see so many parents and students here in attendance. Uh, so we will get right into what is a ton of great content and action on this beautiful spring day. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reading of the mission statement. The mission of the school district of Springfield Township is to educate and develop all students as learners and citizens who are high achieving, resilient, and responsible in a changing global community. Let's do a roll call. Mr. Needleman. Here. Mr. DeFranco. Here. Dr. Etlin. Mrs. Green. Here. Mrs. Hubley. Here. Mrs. Hughes. Here. Mrs. Slapinski. Here. Dr. Taratuski. Mr. Bedard. Here. Just one announcement. The board at its discretion may videotape all or any portion of public board meetings subject to the limitations set forth in policy 006 meetings. Board meetings will be broadcast on Friday afternoon following each board meeting. And with that, we will go right into the main event of this evening, the Spartan Spotlight. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Yannikone to do an introduction. Thank you very much, Mr. Bedard. It's wonderful to see you all. Um, as the members of the board uh, may or may not know, the month of May is when we celebrate the Festival of the Arts. And so we aim every spring to be able to bring together representatives from our music department because we continue under the leadership of those fine people at the back of the room there, the members of our music department uh, and our coordinator, Mr. Gottesman, uh, we continue to be recognized. This is the 10th year in a row um, as one of the outstanding school districts for music education in the country. Um, and we are recognized by the National Association of Music Merchants. And um, that is in large part due to the people who are here with us this evening, our families, our students, and our music department members. So I'm gonna invite Mr. Gottesman to come forward and he has uh, some presentations to make this evening. Mr. Gottesman. Go. A captive audience with a microphone. This is one of my favorite things. Uh, thank you all very much for joining us this evening, and it's my pleasure to represent the music department, and uh, we're going to acknowledge some of the great achievements that the students made this year. Uh, since we've been uh, getting away from the pandemic and hopefully more into a, a more regular school year, uh, a lot of the activities have started up again. Uh, that we took for granted, I guess, before the uh, pandemic came to town. So we wanted to recognize all of the students who participated in our honor festivals this year. And uh, not all of the honor festivals are up and running yet. There was no uh, uh, song fest, I believe, at the elementary level or the middle level. Uh, that's a vocal um, PMEA festival that's run. So we, we do have a few less honorees. We might even have more, more of a crowded meeting next year. So we'll look forward to that. But uh, I want to bring up Mr. Barlow first from uh, the middle school, our middle school band director, and he's going to help present certificates to all the students who participated in the middle school Montco Band Festival. Was that in January? Is that right? In January. Thank you, Mr. Gottesman. So, yeah, so we had the joy of hosting Middle School Monco Band this year. It was my first go, and I'm appreciative to have had that role. Uh, I'll call up folks who participated in that festival and come on up and grab a certificate. And a candy bar. And a candy bar. Uh, first, I saw her come in, Jordana Albanese. Jordana. I don't think I saw saw Juliet Arclus. Conwell, I believe, couldn't make it this evening. Uh, I know Colleen Colville is on vacation and didn't bring me. Uh, Eliana Dahlgren. Decker, I know, is at one of her many athletic events tonight. Uh, Ella Di Pasquale.
Jackson Kelly, Makoto Kaguchi, Eva Nam, Isabella Nguyen, Henry Ryman, Caleb Straub, He had an early dismissal today. Uh, and Raymond Yang. And Samantha Santa. And I will pass this back to Mr. Gottesman. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. So as Mr. Barlow mentioned, uh, we hosted the Middle School Montco Festival on our high school stage at the uh, end of January. And unfortunately, as I mentioned before, uh, some of the festivals have, are, as we're starting to get them running again, we had some unexpected hiccups. And the host of the High School Montco Band Festival was suddenly unable to host. And their, their building and their facilities were not able to host the high school level Montco Band Festival. So I reached out to Dr. Rittenhouse, uh, who always comes from a place of yes, which I sincerely appreciate. And uh, we were able to host the High School Montco Band Festival also this year. And it was a really great night and a great experience. So I want to bring up the uh, the students who participated in our high school Montco Band Festival on our Springfield stage during the first days of February. Uh, first up is Dylan Bauman. Is Dylan here? Thank you, Dylan. And Caden Brunner. And Lauren Bundy. And Owen Chibinski. Josie Clark. And Michael Cooper, wearing my favorite shirt tonight, Michael. That made an appearance on our Florida trip, too, I believe. Very nice. Oh, I forgot all that. I was distracted by the fashion. Could have gotten somebody else's, too. Oh, wow. One, one please, Michael. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Isaac Darga. Thanks, Isaac. And Alana Decker. Did I see Alana tonight? Thank you, Alana. Theo Ferragame. Thank you, Theo. Anya Guinesman. Keegan Hurley. Josie Kling. And Gretchen Lynn. And Julia Pontillo. Julia is here. 
Thank you, Julia. Stella Pratowski. I know Ari's not here. Thank you to Ari Schwartzman and Sarah Sharp. There's Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Will Toombs. And alphabetically last, but certainly not least, Ella Walsh. Candy. Don't forget that candy. It tastes much better than the certificate. I can speak from personal experience. Uh, so that was our Montco Band Festival, but the PMEA festivals, the Pennsylvania Music Educators Association hosts festivals across the state of Pennsylvania for students to move up first to the district level, then to the region level, and ultimately to the all state level. We had a junior clarinetist this year who uh, got into the audition process and really did an outstanding and wonderful job. So I'd like to present certificates for the district band 11 band festival, but also the region six band festival to our outstandingly talented junior clarinetist Thomas Hasty. So I know we've got a lot of business to get on with this evening, but I would like to invite the other members of the department to come up and give them a quick introduction. So from uh, Enfield Elementary School, Ms. Karen Kesavaramanajam. And from Erdenheim Ele Elementary, Mr. Tyler Gibson. And immediately to my right, also from Erdenheim, our instrumental teacher, Dr. Robert Benton. And uh, Mrs. Benton, Mrs. Amy Benton, is at home tonight with the kids. Uh, she wanted to be here, but since she didn't have a festival and certificates to present, she thought it would be nice to send Rob. So we thank Amy very much for all of her uh, outstanding contributions. And next to Rob, of course, is Mr. Barlow, who we heard from before, Mr. Matt Barlow from here at the middle school. And we're also missing tonight our high school choir director, Mr. Andrew Puntel. So help me thank Mr. Puntel as well. And as Dr. Yannacone mentioned, this is the 10th year that uh, our Springfield Music Department has been recognized as one of the best communities for music education by the National Association of Music Merchants. So I wanted to bring our, uh, our sales rep from Zeswitz Music, who is a distinguished member of NAM, and he's going to just say a few words, and he's got a lovely certificate for us to add to our collection. So please help me welcome Mr. Tom Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Gottesman, Dr. Yannacone, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, it is my astute pleasure to stand in front of you this evening and uh, and and present this 10 year in a row. Did I hear that right? It's been 10 years. The best communities for music education. And this is presented by the National Association of Music Merchants. Uh, yes, I'm the education representative from Zeswitz Music, uh, but we're members of NAM uh, and the NAM Foundation encourages us to to actually really pump up uh, what this this accolade means. Uh, not to bore you with any gory details, but I really think it's important that you understand the scope of, of the importance of this. The NAM Foundation started this program over two decades ago where school districts uh, could apply for this particular accolade. It started out very, very small. There's about 14,000 school districts across the country. This year, eight over 8,000 actually applied for this. And I think Mr. Gottesman will attest, attest to the 32 page uh, application. It goes into performance opportunities, the, the, the educational foundation, the rehearsal space and, and everything else in between soup to nuts. It's very detailed. 
and very time consuming to, to put together. Um, it is evaluated not by the NAM Foundation. This is not the good old boys or good old girls club. It's sent out to the University of Kansas. It is evaluated on its own merit. So just by filling out the application, you don't get this award. As I said, over 8,000 applied, only 821 received this. That's across the country. So congratulations, Springfield Township, on a job well, well done. In the pursuit of, of music education here in Springfield Township, uh, it was my pleasure to work with uh, Dr. Henry Pearlberg and Dr. Yana Cohn on actually putting together a string program here in Springfield Township, which I believe will occur next year. Your undying dedication to the pursuit of music education continues on. I was so very pleased to, to be a small part of it, but nonetheless a part of, of bringing a string instrument program here to Springfield Township. So congratulations. We're looking for bigger and better things, more festivals. There are string festivals out there, uh, which we do participate in as well, and, and bringing kids from other school districts together uh, and then hosting here at the last minute uh, is just a, a wonderful thing. So we're, we're so very, very happy to be here. I do have an award, and there's a PR package that is sent, and uh, and I know these folks standing behind me who, without their undying dedication, because it starts in the elementary school, if they don't have a happy time in I'm a little teapot, short and stout, um, they never get to play a musical instrument or sing in 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 the chorus. So it really starts with with these two individuals uh, at a very early age. I know it was that way for me. If I wasn't hooked when I went and played bongos, I'm a percussionist. Bongos in general music class in the third grade, I probably wouldn't start playing drums in fourth grade when it was available to me. So again, it is their uh, undying dedication and the support of the administration. And lastly, the parents, the, the folks that are bringing kids to early morning rehearsals, picking them up late after going to Dorney Park or Hershey Park or, or getting to, to a Saturday practice and, and the, the concerts and whatnot. So thank you, uh, parents, for, uh, for doing such a wonderful job. So without any further ado, we normally do an outside picture with everybody, don't we? And I believe it's posted. Actually, it's on the NAM Foundation's website because you do it right here in Springfield Township. But if we would like to come on up, Dr. Anna Cohn, maybe we can uh, get a, a photo op with you and then we'll shuffle all the kids out onto the grassy yard and, and we'll have fun with it. So congratulations. Thank you very much. If I could just say a one or two words and then we purposely moved the spotlight to the first item on the agenda because I know you all have better things to do after this presentation on a beautiful Monday night. Um, but I just really wanted to thank the members of the board um, for your support of music education, as well as all of our parents and our team here. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity in previous years to go to the Festival of the Arts at Enfield, I think that the creativity and the joy that is coming out of Enfield from Ms. Kesavaramanajam's program is unbelievable. And I know that you are growing musicians from the earliest of ages, because every time I visit, she has kids in six different stations. Everybody's actively engaged. She's incorporated technology in a way that is really interesting and creative for students um, in their music education. And then she passes it off to Dr. Benton and Mr. Gibson, who are phenomenally enthusiastic and they bring in this Pied Piper group of, of children before school, after school, during school. Um, and I can see the students growing in their skill. By the time they get to middle school, um, you, Mr. Barlow and Mrs. Benton are wrangling middle schoolers 
um, to keep them engaged in music education and really help them to grow their talent and skill so that by the time they get to the high school with Mr. Puntel and, and Mr. Gottesman, they're really flying high and moving on to post-secondary education in many cases. Um, and I also want to thank um, Mr. Gottesman. He mentioned Dr. Rittenhouse as a person of yes, and he is much the same, and they all are. Um, this group last summer, I think with a, just a little bit of notice, I said, hey, I have an idea for convocation. We're back together for the first time. I'd like a K through 12 choir. I'd like an elementary through high school choir to kick off our meeting with the staff. And they pulled it together. They made it happen. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. Um, they know because they did it well, I want them to do it again. Um, and so uh, I'm really excited for that. And just recently, I reached out to Mr. Gossman and said, hey, we're having a fundraiser for the Education Foundation. I'd love to have a quartet. And I see some of those members of that quartet who came out and changed the environment um, at that fundraiser because we had music. And the fundraiser's purpose, every year I have to designate a purpose for the Education Foundation. And this year I asked them to support the New Strings program. And I want to thank Zezwich not only for recognizing us, and I appreciate the length of that um, form that you have to fill out because it is daunting, um, but also because when we went and said, we want to make sure that our commitment to making to making sure that every child who wants to play an instrument can, regardless of income, regardless um, of ability level or background, you are a wonderful partner to us in making sure that we can get instruments to every single child who wants one. And so we appreciate that. So I want to thank the board. I want to thank um, all of you in the community. And I want to wish everybody a good night. And I want to give you permission to go before we get through what is a very long agenda tonight. You're welcome to stay, but you have permission to go. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Anakin. Thanks for everything. Thank you again to our school board and to Dr. Yannacone and to all of our parents who support our music program. Uh, so as as uh, I think Mr. Kelly mentioned, we'd like to take a picture out on the lawn. So if you can give us just another couple minutes, we'll let you guys get to the brass tacks and we'll go, go out and have a fun photo with the middle school and the high school students. So thank you all very much. Thanks, Mr. Gallagher. <laughs> so, because I have the microphone, I think we can still be heard at home. And I'm going to finish my report while everybody's heading out so we can keep moving. Um, I mentioned the Festival of the Arts. Just want to make sure that the community knows and that the members of the board know that we have a number of upcoming events. Um, we have our high school art show this Wednesday night at the high school at seven o'clock. We have the high school concert this Thursday night at seven o'clock. Next week, we have Erdenheim's two concerts on Wednesday and Thursday evening. And then the middle school concert will wrap it all up on the 30th. Uh, Tuesday the 30th after Memorial Day weekend. Um, and so we're all happy to have the Festival of the Arts continue this year. Also want to make sure that everybody knows, since we are less than four weeks from graduation, um, that we have several moving up ceremonies, promotional ceremonies. We have the fifth grade moving up ceremony on uh, June 2nd, Friday, June 2nd at 9 a.m. That's going to be in the gym. We've decided to return to an indoor event. Um, we have our eighth grade promotion celebration that will be Thursday, June 8th in Spartan Stadium at 9 a.m. And our high school graduation is scheduled for Wednesday, June 7th at 6 p.m. in Spartan Stadium. Rain date will be the 8th in the evening. Um, I also want to take a few minutes this evening. We've had a terrific year with our student representative to the school board, Sarah Herzig. And I want to just recognize Sarah, who is a current junior. She's going to be focusing in her senior year next year on all the things that seniors have to do. And so we're going to be identifying a new member um, of the high school student body to be our school board representative. But Sarah has done a great job collaborating with our principals and the administration. She's provided student voice at our meetings, and um, she's just been great to work with. So I have a little something, Sarah, for you as a thank you um, for your last report tonight. Um, I will tell you, um, this is highly desired administrative level swag <laughs> um, because 
uh, as the administrators know, every year for the holidays, I get them a little bit of swag and I only order enough for our administrators and our board rep. So this is for you. Okay, um, now the other items that I just had for uh, the meeting tonight, on your board agenda, you're going to find um, that our memorandum of understanding with the Springfield Township Police Department is there. Um, we renew this memorandum every two years. And um, in this case, I want to thank Mr. Steve Chinta, who's here this evening, our supervisor of campus safety, as well as Chief Pitko. Um, we have worked collaboratively with the local police in order to make sure that our campuses continue to be as safe as they can possibly be. And the MOU really has to do with collaboration between the school district and the local police, making sure that where matters of safety need to be shared, that information uh, comes forward in both directions. And so you'll see the MOU on the agenda. Um, I'd also like to just um, share with the public, as I did earlier this week, we have two members of the administrative team um, who will be leaving us at the end of the year. Mr. Rich Oliver, our director of technology, who's done an outstanding job, um, will be with us through June 30th. And then we have a transition plan in place in order to make sure that as we hire the next director, things run seamlessly over the summer so that we can uh, get started in September right on track. Um, and we also, um, regretfully, will have Dr. Andre McLaurin leaving us, our Erdenheim Elementary School principal after 10 years with the district. Um, both Mr. Oliver and Dr. McLaurin have been with us for a decade. In Dr. McLaurin's case, um, he is taking a promotion in, as the Director of Education in Hapro Horsham. We are very happy for him. As I said to him, I suspect this will be a quick stop on his road to the superintendency. I believe that um, he will be an excellent superintendent very soon. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for him to get some central office experience as he moves forward with his professional career. We're very grateful to him. We're going to look for the very next best uh, principal to join us at Erdenheim over the summer. Uh, and that concludes my administrative report. And I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Awesome. Um, well, great update. And uh, I'll just echo the thanks for Ms. Herzeg and all the work that you've done to support the board. Um, and a personal note for both Mr. Oliver and uh, Dr. McLaurin, just incredible talents um, and doing exactly, uh, Dr. Yannickon and I were talking before the meeting, doing exactly what great talent should do, which is continue to grow and develop and build their careers. So we wish them well. And on behalf of the board, I want to thank them for the service, their service to the district, um, spending their 10 years actually through the full tenure of my teenagers uh, uh, having, uh, they both joined before my teenagers started at the elementary school. So pretty awesome to see the impact that they've had on the full student body. All right, we'll move on to our homeschool partnership updates. Uh, and if we have Mr. James Hopes and Ms. Keisha Bronson. See. Yeah, James. Uh, Keisha's not going to be able to make okay. it, so just James. Um, really quick, I just want to plug our teacher appreciation event that we're having on May 22nd. This is the high school and middle school event, and we are still collecting donations. If you would like to support that event, you can look at uh, the websites for both the high school and the middle school, and there are notices from the principals and there are links to donate to that event. And I would also like to plug our final event at EHSP this spring um, on May 20, on May 20th at Enfield, we have our carnival celebration and we're still selling tickets online. Tonight is the deadline tonight at midnight for the discounted presale. Tickets will still be available at the door. You'll just have to spend a little bit more. But we have a lot of, of great fun activities for kids and parents. So please come out this Saturday to Enfield from 11 o'clock until 3. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great update. Quick update. Uh, big, big dates ahead of us. So thank you for organizing everything with the Teachers Appreciation Day coming up on the 22nd. All right, we will head to our Multicultural Parents Association report. We have Dr. Angela Beal Tafik here with us. Hello, everybody. Yes, we finally made it. It's International Water Safety Day. So we're going to talk about it at the end. But 
Um, Multicultural Parent Association would like to, um, just in terms of recap, um, thank everyone for joining us on May 4th um, at the Middle School Library, um, where we actually um, had Judge Chris Sersky, who discussed um, um, Montgomery County reducing racial and ethnic disparity projects, um, at his task force, and that he spearheaded for in the effort of restorative practice programs um, to be that he actually implemented at Cedarbrook Middle School in Cheltenham. We also would like to announce and remember we have our MPA book club meeting on May 16th um, at 6.30 p.m. in Erdenheim Elementary School. And we thank you for that. And you can also still um, go online and uh, it was sent an email to purchase the book if you'd like to be a part of that. And some great, I mean, I'd like to thank the district. I'd like to thank uh, all of you as always, but Dr. Um, Johnson, oh, she got Yes, for implementing and kind of following through. We gave out stickers and um, everything in honor of this uh, water safety uh, day today, International Water Safety Day. We talked about the importance, and I'd like to also thank um, the, uh, the principals and all the schools and the stickers and um, just highlight Dr. Rittenhouse doing it big. A note was sent home to all families via e-blast. Um, it was displayed on the electronic um, sign outside. Resources were shared with staff. The student announcement was made using the script that we shared and um, stickers and homeroom principals, um, which is really uh, shared a lot. And this is very important. And one of the things we like to to just remind us, I mean, the one of the great things about the school district is it has the opportunity to really make an impact in terms of public health around drowning and implementing it, especially at this time of year. One of the things we like to, to say, um, as I shared with you before, there will be a national water safety action plan that's going to be coming out, rolled out in our country. And to have the opportunity for Springfield to be a leader in that effort, especially with drowning uh, disparities impacting children ages 1 to 4 and 10 to 14 uh, disproportionately. Demographically, that breaks out in groups with males being di um, directly impacted children. And then demographically, African-American youth are disproportionately impacted in swimming pools as well as indigenous communities, indigenous uh, populations ages 29 and under being disproportionately impacted. And this is reflective both in water and out of water. So the opportunity to make a stand, especially in terms of it being a pub neglected public health threat that could be a part of curriculum. That is one of the things we are moving towards. I had the honor of being a panel uh, of experts just last week when I was traveling all over at the C CDC um, a foundation to talking about this. And so to know and be able to support and, and know that we have the opportunity, one of the things they're looking at is really trying to find out how in K to 12 school districts we can make an impact to give equal access. Um, this is definitely something that uh, I'm glad that we, we possibly have a, have the opportunity to definitely, I know, be a leader in the Montgomery, in our, our county, be a leader in terms of really making an impact and in terms of making resources that and giving access in different ways, whether it's on land to keep everyone safe in, on, and around bodies of water. I I know that sounded just like a big thing, but that's just, you know, a part of the wonderful things that we can do. So thank you. And I get, you got to do your part and be water smart. So of course. Thank you. For those of you who know me, I do this work, right? And it's about communication and how we do that work. So parents, welcome. This is what we get to do. We get to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. BLTP. All right, we will move to our student report. And for her last and definitely best uh, update for the board, we'll turn to Ms. Sarah Herzeg. At Enfield, the Festival of the Arts took place on May 3rd and was a huge success. Families were invited to experience a transformed world filled with fantastic art, interactive videos, and a dynamic drumline performance by the town's second graders. May 20th will be the EEHSP Spring Carnival. May is a field trip month for Enfield students. Second graders had a fantastic time at the Elmwood Park Zoo, and kindergartners will soon follow suit at the end of the month. Next week, the first grade will go to the Morris Arboretum. At Erdenheim, they are celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Month with staff and students working together to share unique stories and perspectives with the school community through Asian American Pacific Islander videos of the week. May 8th through 12th mark this year's National Teacher Appreciation Week. 
They had a great time celebrating the excellent teachers and staff with various treats and notes of appreciation throughout the week. On May 17th, Dr. Benton and Mr. Gibson will lead the band and chorus students in a school-wide assembly to showcase all of the hard work and dedication students have put forth in preparation for their spring concerts. At the high school, Fun in the Sun and the school's first annual color day will take place tomorrow, May 16th. Congratulations to Girls Lacrosse for winning the Suburban One League American Conference Championship. They finished a regular season record of 17-1. For boys tennis, senior Julian and sophomore Ian won the District One Doubles Championship. And congratulations to the unified track team for placing third place at regionals. The high school is hosting the annual Relay for Life event Saturday, May 20th, starting at 4 p.m. They extend an invitation to all community members. Very much, as always, a very comprehensive report. Uh, before we move into our committee reports, I uh, just wanted to ask the board if they have any comments or questions on our reports thus far. It's a lot of content already. <laughs> okay. Um, a lot of people came for the music, but they stayed for the Academic Affairs Committee report, and we will turn it over to Ms. Hubley. It's actually gone full circle. Yeah. We will it turn it over to Ms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. So on May 8th, we had an Academic Affairs Committee meeting. In addition to the committee, we had some additional panelists join us, Dr. Megan Markle, Dr. Andre McLaren, Mr. Zach Fuller, Dr. Chuck Rittenhouse, Dr. Scott Zregan, Mrs. Jennifer McCaslin, Mrs. Natalie Leg, Ms. Megan Marchetti. Um, we got an update on the important district curriculum work that is going on. Dr. Johnston provided an overview of the district procedures and processes for curriculum review and revision. This includes a four phase approach consistently applied for each project. Throughout each phase, the team, which is comprised of faculty, administration, and students, examines current performance, areas of strength, and opportunities for growth. This builds to planning and developing curricular frameworks, identifying national and state standards, priority standards, skills, concepts, and content. This midpoint provides for a forward-facing document, which highlights the essential questions and course outcomes as it connects to our profile of a graduate. Following a review from Academic Affairs, the curriculum team then explores resources and materials which align to district goals and needs. The team then works to construct instructional components of study and aligning any new resources. After implementation, the team reviews student work and overall progress to determine if any shifts or changes need to be made. Currently, there are projects underway in English language arts, science, health, and world languages. Current project updates were provided by building administrators and teacher leaders who were involved in the projects. Each group provided an overview of the work, priorities emerging from their review, commitments to departmental vision statements and proposed court course overviews, including major units of study, essential questions, priority standards, and links to skills concepts from the profile of a graduate for each course. We got to see presentations in new course designs for English Language Arts, ELA, for high school grades nine to 12 and middle school grades six to eight that included a vision statement and course design. In K-5, structured literacy as required by PDE was presented. The district will be providing professional learning and demonstration of alignment with key components of structured literacy to staff. A video is available on demand on the website for any of the community members who are interested. High school science and biology and environmental science was presented with vision statements and course designs. K to eight science update was given. For health, K to five new standards and strategies for 2023, 2024, that includes a focus on life wellness. This will be connected to the profile of the graduate to balance academics along with physical and well being. <laughs> World languages six to eight refining sequencing for grades six and eight based on family and student feedback, beginning with the 2023-2024 sixth graders. Technology integration, Chromebooks are slated for Erdenheim three to five. 
The district will be moving to touch screens to enable a purposeful transition from iPads at Enfield into traditional Chromebooks at middle school. A board motion for the purchase of these new devices is on the agenda for the board meeting. Early exploration, artificial intelligence. Administrative and faculty learning will occur to help guide the future of utilizing AI as a tool for instruction. We also had a few district updates. State testing update, PSSAs were completed on May 5th, other than makeup testing. AP testing was underway until May 12th, so that is over. Thank you very much for all of us who had seniors taking AP classes. Um, Keystone testing begins May 18th. Spring benchmark testing occurs at the close of May, beginning of June for grades K to nine. Academic performance report will be presented in October 2023 to academic affairs. We also looked at a comprehensive plan timeline and update. Due to PDE October 2023, academic affairs will review the plan in September 2023. We also learned about differentiated supervision pilot. There will be an offering of an option to our experienced and successful teachers to participate in a pilot which allows for differentiated supervision, individual or group inquiry to enhance their professional learning in lieu of a formal observation. And then finally, summer programs 2023, ESY will serve approximately 75 students in three programs this summer from June 26 to July 27, 2023 at the Springfield Township High School. We did not have any public comments at the meeting and our next meeting date is tentatively September 11th, 2023. So does anyone have any questions? Wow. Yeah, it was it was jam packed and we got done pretty quick. Yeah. So thank you for all the hard work that went into that meeting. There was a lot of um, people that put in a lot of effort to get us that information. Any comments or questions from the board? Great, great work. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, and our last meeting report will come from Mr. DeFranco for our property committee. Thank you, Mr. Bedard. The property committee met on uh, Thursday, May 11th at 8 a.m. via Zoom. Board members in attendance were Dr. Carol Etlin, myself, Mr. Michael Needleman, Dr. Karen Taratuski, and Mr. Jeff Bedard. Administration in uh, attendance was Dr. Mary Jo Yannacone, Ms. Cara, uh, <laughs> sorry, having trouble speaking tonight, Ms. Cara Green, Mr. Craig Thorne, and Ms. Samantha Jenko. Uh, board item agenda review items. We had an update on the Church Road athletic fields, which I'm sure everybody's aware at this point. They're in operation and they're being used by the middle school. Uh, the successful ribbon, ribbon cutting was followed by games on April 13th. Uh, games and then some trucks as well. There was uh, um, uh, the Humpty Dumplings was there and then we had the Cone Ice. So that was nice. Um, the there's discussion with PennDOT about installation of a guardrail. It was not initially required, but PennDOT has uh, rethought what they would like, and they want a standard all metal all metal guardrail installed. So that's an ongoing uh, topic. And then there's a path from Lantern Lane that's going to be tied into the existing walking path uh, that was uh, part of uh, the, the whole project. And then there are new trash cans and benches being installed as well. Moving on, the second topic was the Erdenheim accessibility ramp installation. Uh, originally, we had discussed having this go in place this summer. Uh, it has to be delayed until 2024 due to permitting delays. On to the middle school athletic field renovations. Uh, the initial phase of this project has been reduced to include redoing the field, uh, which will include the installation of sod rather than just reseeding it. We also anticipate that the field should be playable by the fall. Uh, the track will be redone with the rubber coating being installed after the football season. Um, some of the previously discussed items that are being delayed until more improvements are made at the middle school uh, include the extended sidewalk, running to the track, replacing the goalposts, restoring the concrete bleachers, installing a shot put, the high jump and surrounding grading, and then a new run and sand put. So those items have been taken out of the initial scope and are being delayed. 
bids came in under the budget for the project. So the reduced budget for just these items uh, was 900,000 and the bids came in uh, with the winner at 768,490. And there is an agenda item tonight for our vote. Uh, they're moving forward with the partial uh, roof replacement at the high school. And also at the high school, the pool acoustical sound improvements are being made and in installation of soft sound baffles, as well as a new sound system. Anybody who uses the natatorium knows how much this is needed. Some additional summer projects throughout the district. There's some padding going in at the Erdenheim gym, uh, furniture and painting in various areas, stage curtain at the Audion. I believe that would be here where we're missing a curtain. Um, and then some spot floor tile repla repla replacements throughout. And then there's an ongoing multi-year light fixture upgrade, uh, which is continuing. We had a discussion of the transportation facility. Um, this includes installation of cameras here at the middle school and improving lighting uh, for the lots to help with um, issues with the buses. Um, the search continues for a new transportation facility. We're expecting a report on this by June 1st. There's an engineering report for existing uh, for the existing garage, which will also be included in the June 1st report. We briefly discussed grants for alternative transportation fuels. On to security and custodial vendors. There's a pre-bid meeting, uh, or there was a pre-bid meeting on May 9th, and the RFP responses are due May 25th with a recommendation by June 1st. Camera upgrades, this is another uh, agenda item for tonight. There are camera upgrades happening at the high school at Erdenheim and the admin building. Uh, this is being funded through a PCCD health and safety grant. The initial plan was more limited than what we're actually able to move forward with due to uh, this grant, which provides more funding. And let's see here. Um, Mr. Bedard brought up a potential uh, impact of the Inflation Reduction Act, which brings some opportunities for us. This includes uh, possible EV charging station grants, and then also funds for large scale solar solutions, which may come into play as we discuss the addition to the middle school. And that was the end of our meeting. We did not have any public comment. Um, and Next meeting, June 1st, as I. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Great update. Any comments or questions on property committee? Um, I'll just add one uh, comment on behalf of the board. I just want to thank uh, Mr. Thorne and the entire facilities and property and grounds team for an incredible job with the uh, new playing fields a great source of pride for the community. And Mr. Thorne uh, is, is doing everything from negotiating multi-million dollar contracts on these projects to caring about the smallest details. And uh, I was really struck in the meeting when Mr. Thorne brought up the fact that these garbage cans are going to be branded are. with the Spartan logo and how aesthetically pleasing that will make it. And uh, I really appreciate that attention to detail. And uh, focus on pride uh, for the district. So um, great work uh, for you and your team. Thank you. All right. Now it says here that we'll move to the superintendent report, but I believe <laughs> you've given your report already. All right. Uh, is it? Do we need to have a motion to change the order in such a dramatic way? Now I think we're okay. I'm too Mr. Berman, we're good. <laughs> Okay, then we'll move to uh, public comments on agenda items, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Needleman. Thank you, Mr. Um, we're going to have uh, public comment on agenda items. I do not see that anyone has signed up to speak on anything in person. For the folks joining us online, I'll invite anyone to speak who wants to, if you just want to raise your hand. I do want to just take a minute to reiterate that we do have a time limit of three minutes and I'll ask whomever wants to speak or whoever wants to speak, uh, please just let us know where you live in the district and off you go. And I don't see any hands raised either for agenda items. Maybe you want to give it another few seconds for Dard and then we can move on. Okay, with no uh, hands raised, we will move into 
our business of the meeting, and I just lost my page. Here we are. We're going to move on to approval of minutes from our prior meetings. First up is approval of minutes from April 18th, 2023, our regular hybrid board meeting. The Board of School Directors approves the board minutes from April 18th, 2023, regular board meeting. Is there a motion? And a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes will pass. Next is the approval of our treasurer's report. The recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves the April 30th, 2023 treasurer's report per the attachment, April treasurer's report, final PDF. Great name. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Treasurer's report is good to go. Next are human resources, personnel and HR contracts. We'll start with the personnel file. Recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the following personnel as presented in the May 15th, 2023 attachment. Administrative personnel, confidential personnel, certified personnel, support personnel, temporary personnel, 2023 extended school year program personnel, extra pay for extra responsibilities for both the 2022 and 2023 school year, as well as 2023, 2024. And finally, conference workshop attendance. Is there a motion? Sorry. And a second. Sorry. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Personnel file is good to go. Our next topic is Edulink, P-A-E-T-E-P. -E -E and for clarity, I will read a better definition here. Our recommended action is the Board of School Directors approves the three-year agreement between Edulink and the School District of Springfield Township for P-A-E-T-E-P, -E -E which is an electronic teacher evaluation portal to be used by the Springfield Township School District to manage the teacher evaluation process for its teachers and supervisors. This will carry a contract dollar amount of $57,293 as per the attached. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second? second. Any comments or questions? I just had one question, the dollar total, um, I don't recall from the agreement, that's for the full three years, it's not an annual expense? Uh, yes, that's a three-year contract. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. All right, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Edge link for P-A-E-T-E-P -E -E is good to go. We'll move next to Edge link for comply. The recommended action here is the Board of School Directors approves an additional three-year agreement between Edulink and the School District of Springfield Township for Comply, which is compliance software to be used for the Springfield Township School District to track and manage employee fulfillment of di district requisites, state mandates, and related compliance items. This will come with a contract total dollar amount of $35,047 as per the attached. Is there a motion? And a second. Second. Any comments or questions on this Edulink contract? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That will pass. Moving to academic affairs as called out in the report earlier. We'll be reviewing the E-plus Chromebook lease. The recommended action here is the Board of School Directors approves the three-year lease agreement with E-plus Group, Inc., not to exceed $341,000 for 660 HP Touch Chromebooks pending final solicitor review and approval. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second? Any comments or questions on the Chromebook, please? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Chromebooks will pass. Pending, of course, final solicitor review and approval. Next up is our tuition contracts. Recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the tuition contract between the Nexus School and Springfield Township School District for student number 20230515-01 for the current school year from March 20th, 2023 until the end of school year in the amount of $34,956 and for the extended school year from July 5th through August 10th, 2023 in the amount of $8,700, the details in the file attachments. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, in a second. Yeah. Any comments or questions on the tuition contract? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're good on the tuition contract. Next under academic affairs is PowerSchool LLC. Our recommended action is the Board of School Directors approves the agreement with Power School LLC for Power School SIS and Schoology LMS implementation, training, license, and subscription fees in the amount of $71,917.75 for the period of June 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2023 and an annual license and subscription renewal in the amount of $133,987.48 for the period of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Is there a motion? And a second. Any comments or questions on the PowerSchool LLC contract? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, that will pass. Next under academic affairs are overnight trips. We have two of them. First is the STHS football team trip. Recommended action, the board of school directors approves the STHS football team to attend football camp at East Stroudsburg University from July 20th to July 22nd, 2023. Is there a motion? motion? All right, we had multiple motions, so we'll go for a second. second. We have a second. Any comments or questions on the overnight trip for the football team? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next up is the Springfield Township High School field hockey team trip. The Board of School Directors approves the Springfield Township High School field hockey team to attend field hockey camp at East Stroudsburg University from July 23rd through July 26th, 2023. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second. Any comments or questions on the field hockey overnight trip? I just want to call out that the attachment is for the football team and not for the field hockey team. Wonderful. We will make sure that that is updated for the final file. All right. Any other comments or questions? Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Overnight trips are good to go. Um, next up is an awesome little line item, uh, a piano donation. Recommended action is the Board of School Directors approves the donation of a Steinway M five foot seven inch grand piano valued at $24,000 to be used in the middle school choral room. Is there a motion? And a second. <laughs> Any comments or questions on the piano donation? This is, this is really nice. This is, yeah. this, this is exactly what it's all about. I would love I would love to know, yeah, is there background on this donation? This is very generous. I can provide a little background. Um, we had a community member who connected us with a another community member 
who wanted to give away a very nice Steinway. It's actually replacement value is about $115,000. Wow. Um, it has a little bit of work to be done, but you may or may not recall that last year we had all of our pianos assessed to see the extent to which you can look to the right um, and see the current piano that we have here in the middle school. So we're gonna have a very nice replacement, um, which will really enhance the music program. So we're thrilled with the donation. Um, it's gonna really help us with our ongoing repair and replacement of the existing pianos district-wide. That's really incredible. So to that community member on behalf of the board, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll uh, take a vote here. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we will accept the piano donation. And again, thank you. Moving on to finance. Our first subject is the 2023-2024 non-resident tuition rates. Bear with me, lots of numbers here. And I did notice that Dr. Yannickon removed all water from my seating area. It's right and behind it, your It's behind, it's hiding. <laughs> and it gave me so many numbers through this. <laughs> It is warm. <laughs> Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the school, the recommended action here is the Board of School Directors approves the following non resident tuition rates for the 2023 2024 school year. For grades K through six elementary, $15,431.04 annually, or $85.73 daily. Grades seven through 12, secondary, at a rate of $16,375.32 annually or $90.97 daily. These rates are determined by the 2021-2022 annual financial report data and calculations approved by the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Is there a motion? In a second? Very good, and thank you. Any comments or questions on our non-resident tuition rates? Um, just this comes up every year. I just think we should have the explanation and here in it sounds confusing. So yes. So Springfield Township School District does not accept non-residents. We do not have a tuition-based program. These rates are set annually so that if a family is found to not be living in the district but to have attended district schools, we use the daily rate to calculate what is owed to the district for services that were not appropriately rendered. Mr. Berman, how did I do? That was fine. Okay. Is there anything you need to add? I will say that that question comes up in every district. Um, they're all very surprised that they're accepting non-resident students. And of course they're not, but um, I mean, there are certain specific times under your policy that you, know, you can, you know, if you're moving into the district or something like that, but other than that, you don't accept non-resident students. Thanks for the question. Uh, great explanation. I, the way I think about this, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is it's a bit of a protection for the taxpayers um, based on supporting our community directly. Okay, uh, if there are no other comments or questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Tuition rates will pass. Next is our annual designation of depositories. Our recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves the following depositories for the 2023-2024 school year. One, Pennsylvania Local Government Investment Trust. Two, Pennsylvania School District Liquid Asset Fund. Three, Wells Fargo. Four, PNC Bank. Five, TD Bank, and six, Santander Bank. Is there a motion? And a second. Any comments or questions on our depositories? If I could ask just for uh, the public that we acknowledge why we have so many depositories and uh, what their purpose is. We diversify our funds, <laughs> that's number one, but um, there's uh, multiple depositories for different purposes. So one um, of the trusts is our main depository for our general operating. Another depository is for our investments. And um, 
for our bond funds. Another depository holds our food service and student activities funds. So it's diversified with um, the different accounts that we have. Thank you very much for the explanation. Uh, with that, we'll go to vote. Um, all those in favor of these depositories holding our funds, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. That will pass. We'll move on to cooperative purchasing. Another lengthy recommended action. Bear with me. The Board of School Directors authorizes participation in the following joint purchasing programs to make joint, pur pur joint purchasing of material, supplies, and, and equipment for the 2023-2024 school year. Association of Education Purchasing Agencies. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of General Service Contracts, or COSTARS. Keystone Purchasing Network, or KPN. Montgomery County Intermediate Unit Joint Purchasing Consortium, Sourcewell. National Buy Board Cooperative Purchasing. National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, or NCPA. Pennsylvania Capital City Automotive and Equipment Contract, or PACC, Pennsylvania Educational Purchasing Program, or PEPPM, the Southeastern Pennsylvania Buying Group, known as SEPA, the Cooperative Purchasing Network, or TCPN, the Interlocal Purchasing System, known as TIPS, U.S. Communities, and finally, U.S. General Services Administration Cooperative Purchasing. And with that lengthy list of joint uh, purchasing programs, is there a motion and a second? Any comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We will again participate in joint purchasing. Nothing on policy for this evening. I think the policy committee was worn down from all the incredible work earlier in the year. So we'll move to the property committee, which again was uh, reviewed in our earlier report. We have just a couple of motions here. The first is for Schlau Incorporated. Our recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves Schlauch Incorporated as the lowest responsible bidder for the middle school track and field restoration project for a total cost of 600, excuse me, for a total cost of $768,490, of which the base bid was $707,775. And alternative number one was $60,715. Excuse me, alternate number one, which was an addition to the project. Okay, with that, is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, Ms. Green. And a second? Any comments or questions on the bid for the middle school project? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, middle school project will move forward. Next under property is the CM3 building solutions recommendation. The board of school directors approves CM3 Building Solutions to replace security cameras at Springfield Township High School in the amount of $58,615.80 under CoStar's contract number 040042. Is there a motion? And a second. Any comments or questions? We just learned that CoStars allows us for joint purchasing, so I feel very <laughs> confident in that quote. With that, we'll move to vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right. CM3 Building Solutions contract will pass. Next is SL Technology LLC. Recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves SL Technology LLC to replace security cameras at Erdenheim Elementary in the amount of $53,229 under, 
under, excuse me, under CoStar's contract number 008436. Is there a motion? Thank you, and a second. Any comments or questions on the Erdenheim cameras? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll move to our memorandum of understanding for the Springfield Township Police. Recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves the memorandum of understanding between Springfield Township Police Department and the School District of Springfield Township per the file attachment MOU Springfield Police PDF. Is there a motion? And a second. Second. Thank you. Any comments or questions? No comments. Okay. Reviewing the memorandum, I just wanted to um, highlight. Diversionary programs, um, positive behavior supports, education, deterrence, um, just to see the flavor of the memorandum um, to support the students um, is encouraging coming from our law enforcement authority. And I'm hoping that we follow through with it um, as it is in the memorandum. Green. Um, you may, may recall several years ago, we actually did a review of both the uh, Pennsylvania State Police MOU recommended, recommended language, as well as the Montgomery County um, Safety and Commissioners recommended language. And we really tried to strike a balance and make sure that our ethics as a district were reflected in this document. I think it's worked well over the last few years. And I think we have a very positive relationship with the local police and we're hoping to continue that. So thank you. Comments or questions on our Memorandum of Understanding. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The memorandum will pass. And now we can move to public comment on non-agenda items. I will turn it over to Mr. Needleman. Thank you, Mr. Doc. Uh, we'll turn now to public comment on non-agenda items. I'll look first to folks who are present with us tonight in the uh, audience. Uh, and I see that Sue Lee has signed up to speak. Is Miss Lee here? Oh, fantastic. Please come on up. Uh, it says here, Miss Lee, uh, you live at 517 East Mermaid Lane in Winmore. Yes. Is that right? That's All right. right. And you want to talk about technology use and instruction? Yes. Uh, I do. Before you begin, I do just want to remind everyone uh, we do have a three minute time limit. So I'll, I'll start the clock and I may obnoxiously oh, interrupt okay. you if sure. we get too far along. Sure. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, yes, my name is Sue Emily, and I have two children. I have my older one is in 11th grade, and my younger one is in uh, 6th grade. And my comments are primarily um, on my 6th grade uh, son's experience of technology use in instruction. And um, thank you for letting me speak. Um, I know that a lot of the way he's learning comes from the pandemic necessity. And I know this because we all know it started that way and my daughter didn't do it. Um, so I'm observing him and, it, and him do a lot of assignments online in which instruction takes place through the screen and him, such as create um, assignments such as look at the online sites that are recommended here and create a, a slideshow or look at this instructional video and answer these questions, or watch these videos and these sites and fill in the blanks. And those assignments are pandemic, have all pandemic origins. And I'm wondering when the school district will concretely try to move away from that kind of passive screen learning interaction kind of experience, because we know that was not the best outcome. It was necessary, but I am hoping to see the instruction move away from that mode of learning as the default mode of learning. Um, that would really, uh, I think, enliven his way of learning that would be a lot more richer, a lot more procedure-based rather than outcome-based. Because I think when I see him do it that way, I see him learning as I just have to get this done. And we know learning isn't like that. 
Learning is thinking, learning is discovering, learning is talking to people and process after process. And I'm thinking that, that this, this, this mode of learning doesn't really encourage that. And another big reason why I really would like to see, uh, yes, a move away from that kind of centrality of learning is because of the GPT, um, uh, chat GPT. And I'm also a teacher and I teach at Temple University and that's all we talk about. Assignments can be made by ChatGPT. Uh, certainly it can create those assignments. ChatGPT can grade those assignments. And the only thing that really, and there's no centralized mode of catching those assignments. Um, the only thing we can really rely on is on the student's own desire to, or interest in learning. And that can only come at this stage, I think. I think by, by college, it might even be too late. So I'm looking at my sixth grade son and thinking, he needs to know why this matters. The process matters. Oh, um, I timed myself. So yes, that's why I'm thinking at this stage is where I would like him to know why the process matters, not the outcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Lee. I don't see anyone else uh, signed up to speak in person. Uh, I, oh, I, I think we do have someone else. Oh, very good. Come on up, please. Uh, just please tell us where you live in the district and, and uh, I'll start the timer. And just be reminded we have a three minute time limit. Thank you. Uh, my name is Karen Moore. I'm at 8813 Wainwright Road in Winmore. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'd like to just um, follow up on some of the concerns that Sue just addressed. Um, my professional background is that I'm an instructional content developer in higher education. So I actually create and develop with um, subject matter experts a lot of the content, the interactive content that's used in, um, you know, specifically in college level courses. And at the forefront of the work that my colleagues and I do is always looking to technology to enhance the learning, to enhance the content, and not to distract. Um, and I think we see a lot of that in a very positive direction at Enfield. Um, I was so impressed by the Festival of the Arts and got to see my second grader made a little animation where he put the music background and it was great. And that's such a wonderful skill for him to have. My fear is that um, that I'm seeing as, as they progress um, through the grades, I have a sixth grader as well, that technology seems to be becoming more of a distraction um, in, a, in a more detrimental way. So for example, um, you know, I can speak for my child, but also the concerns that I've heard other parents share, which is that our kids are often rushing through their work so that they can get to an animation game. They are on YouTube at times that they should not be on YouTube, not watching educational content. Um, there are distractions during class time with kids playing portions of YouTube videos or sound effects, um, you know, while the teacher is teaching. Um, they're looking up non-educational internet searches during class time, during free time. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of the, the, the sixth graders, at least, I'm, I'm not sure about the other grades, have their Chromebooks out during lunch. Um, we've just come out of a two, three year period where they were discouraged from socializing for health and safety concerns. And so they're a little bit behind socially, um, learning how to chat with other people and talk. Um, and so they're on YouTube at lunch. And during that time, the, some of the concerns that I have is that my son has been exposed to content on school Chromebooks, on school time, on school property that are both homophobic and anti-Semitic in nature. Um, I don't see the benefit for, uh, say, exposure to the show South Park um, during lunch. And all of this is happening, you know, during school time on school property. And so, you know, I think as yeah, Sue mentioned, so sorry to interrupt, just sure, absolutely. I, I think as Sue mentioned, a lot of this came from a necessity during an incredibly difficult time when teachers and administrators and parents and students were all under a lot of pressure to figure out how to make this work. But I wonder now if there's a, an opportunity for a more robust discussion to figure out ways that we can, again, going back to my professional experience, how can we enhance the learning through technology rather than have it serve as a distraction? Is there a way that only certain URLs that are required um, you know, for teaching could be available because if you just block certain types of sites, they are, these kids are digital natives, they're amazing. Um, and they can find the unblocking sites that allow them to access everything that the school, otherwise I think very earnestly tries to shut down. Um, is there a sign that we could have no devices at lunch, you know, to focus on those social skills. So it's, it's just a concern um, because technology can be so beneficial in education. We just have to kind of figure out how to make this work. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't see anyone else signed up to speak in person, and I don't see any hands raised either online. Uh, for the folks who are joining us online, if you do want to speak, please raise your hand. And I'll... Oh, hi. How do you feel? In this one. Yes, Angela Beal Tafik, five two five East Willow Grove. Yes. So, um, some of the things I'd like to to just also share in purview of some of the feedback that we have. Um, heard our efforts that have been taken um, with uh, Mr. Fuller and Mr. Payne, especially around just trying to create the bridge, right? That's what we do as a parent liaison for the Multicultural Parent Association to try to, to support um, constructive um, discussions. We do actually have and um, have been meeting with uh, Mr. Fuller and Mr. Payne as a sixth grade kind of uh, grassroots effort of uh, you know, parent kind of a feedback and, and sharing um, around these concerns. Uh, and there are you know numerous things and concerns that parents have also raised to the standpoint around concerns of, of technology, violence, anti-Semitic and racism, uh, racist behaviors that have been coming, you know, students have been coming home with. So um, as we hear this in this light, you know, please be encouraged that we are working towards it. But in terms of, you know, just really the interaction and the goals when we're talking about the importance of mental health exposures um, through the use, of, uh, I mean, that is something that um, we thought would be worthy to be, you know, a, a definite uh, area to to you know be addressed and shared, especially because um, some of the the also the concerns, right? We want to keep people in the district. And um, the effort is to understand that some parents, like we know middle school is a very transition, you know, transitional period. Um, we do know from history that it has been, you know, it's one of your know, areas that the school district has been really working towards, um, trying to improve for the years that I've been here. I've had, I have four children myself. One is a graduate, yes, of the district. And I have a 10th grader. I have a sixth grader and I have, I mean, a, a eighth grader and I have a fifth. I mean, gosh, I got too many kids. A sixth grader. <laughs> um, so, uh you know, the goal is to really try to understand, and I meet and work with teachers, um, encourage teachers and, and the parent and administrator connection often. Um, and the goal is to really, I do believe that Springfield School District does have the opportunity to be a public school district where you can get a private school education. I do encourage parents to speak and engage um, in the discussion. And I, I encourage uh, teachers, I mean, it takes a trust, right? Whether we're talking about issues of racism or structural racism, or we're talking about um, issues of, you know, winning teams in sports athletics, or we're talking about academics and, and enrichment. Um, those are the things that we do want people to understand do not just occur at the elementary level, but they do, uh, there is a, a period um, in the middle and, and opportunity that if you hang on um, and get to the high school that there can be growth. It, it's, it's growth that's made, you know, we know we're facing societal issues within. And so I always I commend. I, I forgot. Oh, to there we go. Three minutes and I'm done. See, you don't even have to say. Thank Bye. You. You had time left. I just wanted to. One minute. Done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't see anyone else uh, sign up in person. As I said, I don't see any hands raised online either. So. I think we can okay in our public comment. Thank you. All right. Appreciate all the comments from the public and for you being here. A couple of announcements to close the meeting. We have some future meeting dates. We have an interim board meeting coming up on Tuesday, June 6th, 2023. That will remain hybrid. And a regular board meeting on Tuesday, June 20th, 2023, also a hybrid meeting. Reminder for in-person attendees. They are held here in the Audion located at the middle school next to the middle school cafeteria. We have some future committee meetings coming up. Uh, as we talked about uh, a little bit earlier, there's a property committee meeting on Thursday, June 1st, 2023. That's at 8 a.m. and that is a virtual only meeting. And a policy committee meeting on Monday, June 12th, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. That is also a virtual meeting. I uh, well, understand why policy gets to start a half hour later, but the property committee, again, will be meeting very early at 8 a.m. Uh, all based on the request of the committee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
details on how to register and attend these meetings, and we do welcome the public to all of these meetings, uh, can be found on the district website. Uh, with that, I'll open it up to the board members for any closing comments or uh, questions for administration or the public. Any comments? I'll Hearing none from the board, then we'll turn it over to Dr. Yannickone, who clearly has a oh. comment she would like to make. <laughs> Sorry, I've been out of order all night. I apologize. I just wanted to thank um, the members of the community for coming tonight, for staying with us through a long agenda. Um, for those of you who spoke, um, Ms. Beal Tofik knows this well, but for those of you who um, are new to speaking here, thank you very much for taking the time to come. Um, you can expect that Dr. Johnson or I will reach out for a follow-up conversation with you by the end of the week. And again, thank you very much for your interest, for sharing your concerns, and for coming to the meeting. Okay. With that, uh, this was a wonderful, it's always one of my favorites to celebrate the music achievements um, and it's just a, a shining source of pride for the district to have such an accomplished um, music uh, uh, school uh, curriculum and, you know, ever increasing our prowess there with the strings department coming next year. Um, so congratulations to all the students again and, and their parents as well. Uh, with that, we'll close it. And thanks, everyone, for coming. We'll adjourn tonight's meeting. Thank you.